So Jaya, tell me about your rather intense ITU experiences. So intensive care uh, experience, I find it quite difficult to talk about it, mainly because uh, it was a um, horrible time and I was terrified for a lot of it. So th why did I go into ITU? Well, it was actually the day after my birthday uh, and uh, the, I was basically had what they call neutropenic septic shock. So because I had low neutrophils, or very uh, low, in, uh, low immunity, immune system, if you like, um, and that was because of the chemotherapy, I'm more vulnerable to infection. And so I had uh, severe infection um, it, it with E. coli, as it turned out. And within one hour of me uh, coming to hospital, I was in intensive care. Um, I found the experience terrifying. Um, I was hallucinating. I was uh, disinhibited. I felt confused. Um, I felt as if I was in a twilight zone. I felt depersonalized as if my, I wasn't quite in my body as such. And it's a very strange sort of sensation. Um, then I, I lost track of time, for example. You know, I didn't know whether what day it was. It's almost like perpetual jet lag. Um, and of course, there were other symptoms like pain. So um, I had pain because um, not only because of there were so many tubes, you know, I had tubes through my nose, I had a catheter, I had lots of tubes going uh, for various infusions. And every time I moved, I would tug on one or pull on one. Um, and, and essentially, the, the, um, the septic shock process affects multiple organs. So, uh, you know, name any organs, name it from like brain, which I was talking about, hence the confusion. Uh, lungs, so my, I was breathing at various points at sort of 40 to 50 breaths per minute. Um, heart rate, the heart is trying to keep up with the, you know, uh, keeping up the blood pressure because one of the things that happens with septic shock is your blood pressure falls, which is why your organs, your major organs are threatened. So my heart rate was 150 to 170. So I would be in a state after two to three days, I was absolutely exhausted to be honest, you know, and, and almost to the point that I wanted to, to, to die. You know, I was so exhausted, I just said, enough. Um, they wouldn't and couldn't really ventilate me because to ventilate me, it, it means sedating me, um, you know, putting a tube to help me breathe, basically, like getting me anaesthetized. Um, and also, so my blood pressure was, was not strong enough to be able to do that because blood pressure falls with sedation. And also, if I was ventilated, um, I would actually, they wouldn't get me off, off it, they think. So I, I, I really was in a dark place, where exhausted and, and thinking, I, I'm dying here. And, and actually, that wasn't far from the truth, as it turned out. Um, I remember, you know, uh, my wife, uh, having to tell my daughter, you know, daddy may not come home from hospital. Um, that was how serious the prognosis was at, at one point. Um, but um, my wife who was a guardian angel throughout, held my hand and she gave me um, what's called a box of hope. Um, so she said, you know, just remember who's waiting for you at home. And that seemed to just click me mentally. Um, a, a sort of a, a survival instinct, if you like. Um, the other aspect of um, being in ITU is, you know, uh, you realize how vulnerable you are. You feel naked, completely naked in, in body and mind. You don't know, you have no control over what you're saying. Sometimes you might say disinhibited things. Sometimes you might be sort of hallucinating and picking up, picking at things that should be there, um, and 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 also you, you feel um, naked from the body as well. You know you 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 are in essence completely nude, and and you just feel exposed. You know, um, and 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 that was uh, that was that wasn't too bad. You know, I realised I was totally dependent, but there wasn't any sense of privacy, although I was treated with utmost sensitivity and dignity 
but none nonetheless you know i did feel just just naked from that point of view both mentally and physically um the other thing post itu so i recovered um thankfully due to the care and the skill of the itu doctors and i'm really really indebted and grateful for them you know they did a, a remarkable job is i started having flashbacks almost like uh, post traumatic stress disorder um it was quite scary the first time it occurred because uh, you know they they, they they sometimes come unannounced and you know uh, suddenly i would feel how, how i did uh, during it you know i'd get breathless choking sensations as if i was going to die my heart rate would be pumping and and then it would go and the fear was was immense i started having panic attacks uh, and so um, my hematologist um, did uh, refer me to a psychologist and and i and i got a uh, that helped a great deal in trying to get through these flashbacks i still have um bad memories recalling them you know and and talking about it now i i do feel uncomfortable but at least i don't get the um the unexpectedness of flashbacks which suddenly come now i can actually control it by switching off and switching on the memory if you like um so it 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 is a profound experience being on itu not just during the time but actually afterwards you know it you it does carry with you and having said that it's being increased it has been recognized and you know the pastoral care afterwards was excellent i have to say